Not working. That's okay, just move on. I know. All right. So today we're going to talk about. Oh. All right, how many of you know Hebrews 4? 4, 4.12. I know Hebrews coffee. Hebrews 4.12. What does Hebrews 4.12 say? What does it say? Oh. Get in here. Get in here. <laughs> My phone is late. I got it. Darn it. <laughs> Beat me. Hebrews 4. It says, let me read it to you, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So today we're going to talk about the word of God, Dave and I, and um, I just want to share with you about this scripture it says the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, um, I did bring a little sword here today. And I want you to notice it's not very sharp, right? And my husband wouldn't let me bring my samurai sword. We have a real samurai sword. I have sword, a samurai have sword. A... When I went to a samurai school, I went to samurai school. Oh, well, well bring a weapon right to church. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't let me bring it. I wanted to bring it. So anyway, I have a picture of it here with Dave holding on to it. That's my this samurai morning. That's sword. This morning, Dorothy. That was this morning. So you can see, it, it's nice and shiny. And uh, it's got, uh, yeah. So you can see. That's my samurai sword. And I got that in uh, Phoenix when I went to a leadership training school. We had to we had to do some samurai training. That was kind of fun. You had to earn it. I had to earn it. <laughs> but uh, what I want you to see is in the in the the Bible it says here in Hebrews 4:12, it says that the word of God is living. And what does it say? And powerful. powerful. Yeah, it says it's powerful and it's sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword. sword. All right. So, <coughs> one of the things that the word I'm kind of focusing on is sharper, okay? This would not probably do much work, would it? If I needed to cut something, would I be able to cut anything with this? No. No, it's pretty, it's pretty It's kind dull. of sharp, though. But, but I mean, it's plastic, <laughs> but it wouldn't so cut it wouldn't anything. Much, yeah. yeah. But this is what it means, the word in the Greek means, to, it means to be able to cut with a single stroke. It says, where, whereas that implies repeated blows like hacking. You know, like this, you probably have to, it Most probably wouldn't even, wouldn't even hack anything. It probably wouldn't even do anything. It just, it would just make a mess of it. If I tried to cut a tomato with that, it would just probably wreck the tomato, right? If I hacked it. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's what it's talking about. The Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It's sharp. All right? So the Word is Ouch. going to... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's going to... It's, and what, is, it's, what does it say it's going to do? It's, a, it's going to pierce. to pierce between the division of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. And I was just praying about that this morning, and the Lord just showed me the Word of God is what's going to discern between the thoughts and intents of our heart. In other words, do you know you're all going to be rewarded in the end? In the end, you know, I was listening to a song as Ash was coming to church this morning, and it talked about the story, you know, when I get to the glory land, about the story that I'm going to tell, you know, and... The story that we're going to tell is about all the things that God did in and through us while we were here. And all the souls that got saved and all the people's lives that were changed. And we're going to be rewarded based on that. You're going to have rewards. Silver and gold and precious jewels are going to be given to you. You're going to be rewarded. You think, wow, God's going to actually give us rewards. So when we get to heaven, it's not just like we're working here, you know, there's sometimes when we get up in the morning, even on Sunday morning, some mornings, and we think, boy, I don't feel like getting out of bed. Do you ever mm -hmm. feel that way? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel, yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. Do you ever feel like, you know, sometimes there's, I mean, I have to be honest with you, you know, I've traveled all over the world to preach the gospel all over the world, but there's sometimes that I just don't feel like it, 
And you know what? You have to just make your flesh mm -hmm. do it. Right? Your body, our body yep. is stupid. It doesn't want to do what it's yep. supposed to do. But our, my spirit does, my soul does, my mind knows that if I work for the Lord, I'm going to be rewarded. And I mm -hmm. want that reward. Not only that, but the Bible says that we are going to rule and reign with Christ. Amen. Those who have overcome are going to rule and reign. What does that mean? That means that you and I are going to be, where in this earth, we're going to be ruling over this earth for a thousand years. We're going to be up there in leadership with Jesus, ruling over the nations. That's what the Bible says. How many of you would like to be ruling with Jesus? Or would Amen. you rather be one of the you know, people out being ruled? Or would you like to be ruled, one of the rulers? Yeah, we're going to be ruling with Christ if we overcome. So it's important that we understand that. And one last thing, as we um, talk about the Bible and, and the Word of God being, you know, powerful, we also, how many of you know, does, anybody can guess what this is? Here we go. Yeah, what is it? It's what is this? What is it? Book. Can anybody tell what is it? It's a manual. It's a manual. Manual for what? For your uh, car. My car. Owner's manual. It's my owner's manual. Guess what? Whenever I have a trouble with my car, where do I go? To the owner's manual. I go here to find out what to do, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I go there first. And then, if you and can't then help, I go no, to the manual. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I had, I, he couldn't help with, he didn't have a clue. I, have I these, went to your manual, though. But it's what I mean. You went to my manual, and, I, and it didn't help him, so I went to the manual. It didn't help me either. But, but anyway, that's not the whole point. It's supposed to help us. The manual is supposed to help. It probably does something. It did help me find the places to look right. in your car. Right. It's just that we... For lights. The light. We were right. Trying. We're having problems with my light. So the, my whole point is, is that if you're having a problem, you go to the owner's manual, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So the same way in our life, you know, this is our owner's manual. Hallelujah. God made you. He created you. He knows every cell. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. This is the Word of God. Right? Everybody Amen. says this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. Amen. It's sharp. It's sharp. sharp. It's, alive. it's alive. It's alive. It's active. It's active. It's powerful. It's powerful. And it's going to help you if you let it. And it'll help me if Amen. I let it. If you, yeah. if you look into it, if you go to it like an owner's manual. So when you have a problem, you go to the owner's manual. Okay? Right. So Dave's right. going to talk about more the about owner's the owner's manual. It'll change your life. Amen. Hallelujah. It'll change you. You know, as uh, the scripture says, the word of God is living and powerful. Remember, this book lives. Amen. Living Amen. and breathing. I mean, we don't look at we we usually look at our Bible as just something that's just a thing, which is you know a lot of good things written in it, and uh, something that we need. But you need to realize that this book contains the words of God. It says here, the Word of God is living. Amen. I think uh, one version of this, you know, uh, a verse says that the Word of God is a living thing. Amen. God's Word lives. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever done it in this church, but you've heard said this Word is alive. It breathes. Amen. Just imagine your Bible sitting on the shelf or sitting on a table at home, and it's because it's Jesus. Because this is alive. Amen. This is powerful. Amen. This is sharper, as we saw with that sword. This is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this will pierce, as it says there in that scripture, it'll pierce uh, the soul, the division, it, to the dividing of the soul and spirit, uh, to the and to uh, of joints and marrow. And as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, all those things have to do with not just the outside, but more so on the inside. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. It's a divider of the soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. Where's that? Is that outside? Is that inside? It's inside. Joints and marrow. Where mm -hmm. are they? They're part of your bone, your skeletal system, physically inside. You know, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. This word of God will pierce inside you 
Or we could say it this way, it'll change you from the inside right. out. Amen. Yes, amen. See, we try to focus on the outside in, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know, people in the world in general and just people in general, we think, well, if I could just change my hairstyle, mm. if I could just lose one or two, maybe 20 or 30, <laughs> <laughs> things will be different. If I could just get some more money, if I could just move a different place, mm. if I could just buy this car or meet this man or this woman mm. or, you know, meet this person or get this job or, you know, outward things. If I could just do these outward things, my life would change. And, you know, God does want to change our outward, but you know where it starts? Inward. On the inside. Inward. And how is the inward going to be changed? How is it going to be, you know, penetrated? By the Word of God. Right here. Amen. The Word of God. By the Word of God. This Word is alive. Yes, it is. It's powerful. And it's sharp. It'll pierce. It'll do the job. Mm. Hallelujah. Because it is a living thing. It's alive and it's full of power. Now, I think the amplified version of this verse, it says it's, uh, I wrote it down, it's active, operative, energizing, and effective. Dean, you're checking me on that. I know you are. Because you know, it's, 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 he's got the amplified version there. So good to know that, though, because in case I don't have it written down, I can say, Dean, can I see your Bible for a minute <laughs> or read that? Hallelujah. It's active, operative. That means it does something. It's not just dead words on a page. You know, it's not just like uh, words on a newspaper and in just a regular book or, you know, that you read on the internet or something. It, these words are alive. These words will change your life. These words will do something. You know, words in general are, are, are powerful. Your words that you speak, but you know how to, to make your words uh, uh, super powerful, uh, exponentially powerful is if you're speaking words that God speaks. Mm -hmm. If you're speaking His words, I mean, because these when the, the Scripture says that this word is powerful, it's talking about energizing. It's talking about, it, you know, it does something. Very much so. When God says powerful, it's not like, well, just a little bit strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, God means, you know, it's a super blast. You know, super powerful. Amen. But why? Because it's the Word of God. It's God's words. He's unlimited in power, isn't He? Amen. He's unlimited in His power. He's unlimited in what He can do. And, you know, this book will change your life. This book has changed history. The most, it's still, the, the most popular book worldwide is still the Bible. I don't think there's a book that's overcome it yet in, in uh, popularity, mm -mm. And sales and whatnot. No other religion, no other secular book. This book you know, has changed nations. This book has changed the world. This book not only has changed history, it'll change your history. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Not Amen. only has this book changed the world, it'll change your world. Amen. Yes. Wow. That's because it's so powerful. The words of God are powerful. You know, it's changed the world. It can change your world. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and, and verse 32, he said, If you abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. See, God's word has enough power in it to set you free from whatever it is that's trying to hold you uh, uh, bound up trying to hold you back, trying to hold you in bondage, trying to enslave you, anything, anything that in life that would try to control your life, this book has enough power to set you free. Amen. Amen. Why? Because it's the Word of God. Amen. It's the Word of God that is very sharp. Mm. <laughs> and I powerful. I wouldn't do well, that this with one's a real not so one. powerful, but the Word of God is. <laughs> Amen. It's sharp Amen. and powerful. Hallelujah. It'll lift you up out of poverty into prosperity. Amen. It'll lift you out of mediocrity into, and into success. And from doubt to faith. Faith comes by hearing what? The Word of God. 
Amen. I mean, think about this. You can be so down in the dumps, so uh, depressed, and so just, uh, you know, unbe uh, unbelieving, negative, uh, seeing no, you know, hopeless, seeing no way out, and you start hearing some of these words. Amen. Start reading some of these words. Start speaking some of these words, and yes. things change. Situations change. Not just your attitude changes. Not that just a, a piece that comes on you changes, but also this word will change outward things. Amen. Right. Amen. When God spoke his word, what happened? He said, let there be light. Nor Boom. Yeah. There was light. Yeah. The big bang happened. <laughs> Come on. Yep. But that yeah. had happened as a result of God speaking. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. It didn't happen just because, you know, like the, the theory or this, you know, the scientific theory of the, the Big Bang where everything was confusion and bang, it all came into order. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how, what the chances of that would be? Just bang, it all comes into order. How could that happen? The Word of God. Amen. God speaking it into existence can happen. Amen. But by no, you know, did not, it couldn't happen just randomly. I mean, what if you went to a lumber or... or, or Take a, a, a lumber yard, uh, Home Depot, Menards, one of these big lumber places where they got all this lumber stored, you know, in their in their uh, yard and all of that. And and if that got blown up with a, a bomb, and all that lumber just flying up in the air, and all the housing, and then it all comes back down and it comes all together into perfectly house. built houses. Mm. What would be the chances of that happening by itself? It couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. No. Creation happened as a result of God's Word because His Word is what's powerful. Amen. Amen. His Word is what brings things together. His Word is what makes things right. Amen. 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 This Word is alive and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It is something that if you abide in it, that means live in it, exist in it, Wrap your life up in it. You will know the truth. Not just so you can be a Bible scholar, but that truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. I think it was one of the speakers yesterday. Who was it, honey? Um, one of the speakers talked about, I don't believe this book just because of what it says. I don't believe this book just because I've got it memorized. I believe this book because I've experienced what's happened in this book. Amen. What this book says happens. Yes. And that's why we believe it. It produces. Amen. You know, if you'll believe it. Yes. Amen. Because it's a life-changing, the words that it contains are life-changing. It tells you, you can find out who you are, what you can do, and what you have in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, the world will tell you who you are. The world will try to tell you what you can do. The world will try to tell you what you can have and the system and the way things work. But I'm here to tell you there's a higher truth than the world's truth. Amen. This is God's word. And God tells you who you are. You are a child, a son or a daughter of him. Yeah. Amen. Yes. You are a son and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. It says that you have all things and you can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens you. Amen. You've got to dig into this to find out who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Amen. This is the truth that will really set you free. When you find it, you'll never be the same again once you find out those truths. They're all here in this living, powerful Word of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's life changing. It has changed lives and it'll change your life for the better. You know, the devil hates this book. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. The devil hates this book. He's afraid of it. Well, he should be. He's got reason to be afraid, right? right. Because these are power, this, these, the words this book contains are powerful. More powerful than he is. I mean, he's out to get the word. He's out to get the word out of you before the power of it can work in you. Amen. You know, you all know the, the, the parable, the story Jesus told of the sower, Mark chapter 4. You know, it, where I, I wrote it down here. Mark chapter 4 and verse 14. Jesus, or verse 15.
He said, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown or planted. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Mm. The devil hates this word, so he comes immediately to try to take it away. Mm. How does he come to take it away? Well, one way is, you know, as far as the immediate taking away, there's a lot of different ways if he can't get it immediately, then he'll try some other things, and you can read about that there in in Mark chapter 4, also in Luke chapter 8, um, the parable of the sower. He uses a lot of different ways, but first he tries immediately to get it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the immediate ways he tries to get it? Oh, he gets you to just get distracted. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you, you hear the word of God and you're just really not listening, you're paying attention to something else. And so, bam, you lost it. I mean, you didn't get it. Immediately it got stolen because you were distracted. Or, you know, he, he uses uh, things, you know, what's going on in your body, what's going on in your life. Get you so fo focused on yourself, so focused on the, in, you know, on just you, you, and just you by yourself. Uh, and you get, distract, get distracted by that, and immediately the word gets stolen. Amen. Things like that, you know, people that uh, they're flipping through the TV and, you know, they, they, they see a TV preacher and they change the channel right away. Immediately the word got stolen. You know, and so Satan will do that to try to steal the word immediately so that they, well, it says over in Luke, over in Luke chapter 8, I think, in uh, verse 18, I think it was, let me look. Luke chapter 8. This is the uh, uh, 8 and verse 12, Luke 8 and 12. This is the parallel passage to the Mark passage, Mark 4. Here it is in Luke's version. It says, now those by, those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Why does he steal the word? He doesn't want you to believe. Because the word, hearing the word will cause you to believe if you hear it. And so he tries to, hit, to steal it so that you won't believe it and be saved. That's right. And if he can't get you to, you know, and if that doesn't work, you know, if you hear the word and believe it, give your life to Jesus, be saved, well, then he'll use a bunch of other tactics. And you can read about them there in the rest of that parable. You know, that's not the whole purpose of what I want to talk about this morning. I just wanted to bring uh, the, the, the fact out that the devil hates this. Mm. And he comes, the Bible says he comes not uh, sometime or other later, not in a delayed fashion. You can, when you hear the word, just know this. Somehow the devil's going to come immediately to try to steal it. Come on, just right. be on guard and don't let him. That's right. Amen, we have a choice. Just because, you know, he shows up doesn't mean you have to bow down and give in to him. Come on. That's right. Just because a thought comes into your mind doesn't mean you have to dwell on that thought. Did That's you know right. that? Amen. Just because something, somebody says something about you doesn't mean you have to believe that That's or right. even take offense at that if it's yeah. something they're saying against you or about you. Yeah. It's your choice what you do with words. Mm -hmm. Well, when you hear the Word of God, it's your choice to receive it and believe it. When you hear the little whisper of the, the devil in your ear, you know, you've seen these things on TV, you know, they got the little devil on the, mm -hmm. on the or the little demon on somebody's shoulder and the little white angel, angel on, on the other, side the other the shoulder, and they're one's either speaking into the person's ear on each side, and they're trying to decide which one they're going to listen to, and all of that. You decide that. You know that? Amen. Just because you hear the voice of the uh, of uh, you know negative things and bad things and destructive things, and you hear the voice of the devil and the things he speaks or his you know his demons, you don't have to accept them. You can choose to say, "I'll take God's side here." Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Amen. You can. <clears throat> and when you do that, that will change your life because those words have power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Power to overcome these words over here. Hey, we could have had a good visual here today. You know? <laughs> These words over here, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The, the, you know, you, we can receive the words of God. Hallelujah. You know, it says in, uh, I think it's 2 Timothy. You all know this verse probably. Uh, 2 Timothy 3. 16, is it? No. 15. Huh? 15. Oh, I'm in Hebrew. Sorry, honey. That's why. I mean, that was good. Hebrews 3.15 was good. Uh, 
2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. God, why is this word so powerful? It's God's word because he inspired these words. Uh, some versions say, there. I, I don't know if it's the Amplified there, Dean, but I think that some versions say that this scripture is God-breathed. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a result of God's, God breathed on these words. His breath is on these words. I, it reminds me when Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. He, when God's breath is on you, there's power in that. God breathed on these words, and there's power in that. These are God-breathed words. Hallelujah. I mean, it's no ordinary, they're just not ordinary books. Or no, not ordinary words and ordinary books in this book. They're God-breathed words. He, his words are alive and powerful. They'll never die. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. Amen. Think about this. You know, people it, throughout history, oh, once in a while you see a, 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 a quote from somebody way back in history. But mm -hmm. basically speaking, most of what a person has said in their lifetime, most of it gets forgotten mm -hmm. at some point, sometime or other in history, right? right? But the words of God, he says, these words will never pass away. They'll never die. Amen. Amen. What he says, uh, you know, what his words say, they they, it, they will happen. They will they will produce. They will come to pass. You know, God tells us what to do with these words. You all know Genesis or Joshua one and verse eight. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, this book, these words, don't stop speaking them out of your mouth. Don't let them get away from you. Amen. Keep them in your mouth so that you can speak them out in your, with your mouth. Let them not these words not depart from, be, from your mouth, but meditate in these words. Amen. Meditate. Think about. Mutter them. Talk about them. Think about them when? Day and night. Well, it's either day or it's night, right? Mm -hmm. It's either daytime or nighttime. And that's, what. Well, what are you supposed to think about God's Word? Daytime, nighttime, all the time. 24 hours. Just all the time, thinking the Word of God. Talking the Word of God. Speaking the Word of God. Muttering the Word of God. Murmuring the Word of God. Meditating on the Word of God. This, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do. See, that's why you do it. That's why you get in these words. That's why you hear these words, take in these words, meditate on these words. Why? So you can do these words. Amen. Amen. Because unless you do these words, nothing's going to really happen. Mm -hmm. See, these are action words. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then the scripture says you will make your way uh, prosperous. Then you will have good success. What do we do with these words? Talk about these words. Meditate on these words. Read these words. Study these words. Think about these words. Imagine, Amen. Imagine them. Yes, imagine. That's another word for meditate. Imagine these words day and night, all the time. And it will produce as you do them. You know, Psalm 1, we all know Psalm 1, right? I don't know, I keep saying that, maybe you don't. <laughs> but if not, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Okay. Psalm 1, you know, tells us what kind of counsel we're to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, how to be a blessed man or a blessed woman. Mm -hmm. And that's me, I want to be blessed, how about you? Amen. We all want to be blessed if we're in our right minds. We want the blessing of God on our life. Well, the scripture tells us how to be blessed, the very first psalm, the very first words of the book of Psalms is, it says, blessed is the man, and that includes women, includes mankind, mm -hmm. okay? Perth people. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Well, the first way to find out how to be, how to be blessed is to find out what not to do. Amen. Here he says, don't walk in ungodly counsel. You know, Linda and I were talking about this, I think it was yesterday, honey. We were, or yesterday or the day before, maybe it was Friday night. Uh, we were uh, talking about, you know, these uh, fact checkers, you know, with the, 
politics and the oh, yeah. you know all the debates and all this stuff going on. You always see these little articles about well, here's really the facts. Somebody checking the facts. Well, how do we know them are the facts? That's right. That's their facts. That's right. That's what they think are the That's facts. Right. Just because they say it's the facts, it's not the facts. That's right. Amen. They're all distorted facts. Yeah, they're, they're distorted things. They're and not they're not even facts. facts. The, the fact checking isn't facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I'm saying is don't listen to ungodly counsel. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody says this is the truth doesn't mean it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody says this is the fact doesn't mean it's the fact. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't, if you want to be blessed, that is. That's what this says. If you want to be blessed, don't listen to ungodly counsel. It says here, uh, he walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. He doesn't stand in the path of sinners. In other words, doesn't just side right in with what all the sinners are doing. Not if you want to be blessed, because, you know, if you're, if you're just uh, living a life of sin, that'll ruin your life. It'll wreck it. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and death even before final death. That's right. Everything that produces death. And it says there, so don't stand in the path of death, you know, just be right in there with them, or sit in the seat of the scornful. Oh, somebody starts talking bad about so-and-so, and you just chime right in. Amen. You know, oh, this is bad, and that's bad, and that, yeah, yeah I know. You, 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 pretty soon you find yourself right in, well, look what it says. You're, you're uh, walking, you're standing, and then you're sitting. Hmm. I mean, that's going backwards, right? Mm -hmm. You're walking, you're standing, and then you just sit right down. Wow. Isn't that something? That's how your life will go if you do these things. Well, that's how not to be blessed. Here's how to be blessed. I'm glad God tells us how. Amen. Amen. Just leave Amen. us with the, you know, how not to. Yeah. He says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. If you want to be blessed, delight yourself in the law of the Lord. And it says, and in his law, uh, he meditates day and night. Just like Joshua 1 says. In his law, he meditates day and night. Amen. And what's the result of that? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Think of that picture. Mm. A tree planted firm by the water, life-sustaining water, leaves that don't wither, fruit that produces, you know, healthy fruit. And it says, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. And Amen. look at the next verse, just the first phrase, but the ungodly are not so. Mm -hmm. So just remember that. Amen. See, it's a result of a person who doesn't go by God, godly counsel, godly words, godly ways, go by God's words, God's counsel, and God's ways. Because these words are alive, these words are powerful, these words will produce in your life. If you put these words into practice, whatever. What does whatever mean? Whatever. Whatever you do. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Whatever you do will prosper if you do whatever these words say. Amen. Amen. Because, come on everybody, let's breathe. These words are alive. Amen. These words are powerful. I wish I had some kind of an air thing I could pump. <laughs>